Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're talking about five ways that if you're a beginner in the stock market, you actually have an advantage over some longer term investors, guys. Some people like me that have been investing a while, some people like that are way older than me that have been investing for 20, 30 years, you actually have some advantages over them. And we're gonna kinda of go into those. I'm gonna tell you the five advantages. I'm also gonna do a couple honorable mentions that almost made the list. And this video I thought would be a, a interesting one to do. After last week's video, when I posted the video about um, 10 ways beginners in the stock market get screwed, and that was actually a pretty popular video that did very well on this channel. So, uh, But at the same time, you do have some advantages as a newbie in the stock market. So let's go over those today, guys. Hit a thumbs up if you enjoy this today, and let's talk about this. So number one way you have an advantage as a new person in the stock market versus an older person is you have no skeletons in the closet yet. You have no skeletons in the closet hiding. What does that even mean? Well, okay, here's the thing. Uh, if you've been investing in the stock market for long enough, you've probably been invested in some poor stocks here and there. Maybe some ones where you lost a lot of money. Maybe some ones where you lost a little bit of money. So you've got some skeletons in that closet. You've got some things hiding in there that are haunting you, that are making you a little more scared to maybe invest in a certain type of company. If you invest in one of those type of companies in the past and you got screwed. For instance, let's say you were into, let's say you were an investor in Fitbit at, at $40, $50 a share or whatever, and you thought, you know, that was a great company. Well, you might have gotten screwed because now Fitbit's at five, six bucks a share, right? So you might have lost a massive amount of money and maybe you sold out at $20 or $30 or something, got out of it. And so you, you certainly lost money, but you didn't lose as much money as you could. But at that point, it might be very hard for you to ever trust another wearable type company again because you got screwed so bad. So maybe you did, um, maybe you got in on Facebook IPO. Facebook IPO'd at like 38 bucks a share. About six months later, Facebook was trading around $20 a share. You might have some skeletons in the closet there and, and say Snapchat's about to come out. You might be like, hell no, I'm not touching that IPO. I got screwed on the Facebook IPO. I don't want to touch any IPO. So you might have some skeletons in that closet that just because a certain company was in a certain industry and it kind of reminds you a little bit of some other kind of company, you might never touch that other company just because you're too scared because of those old skeletons in a closet where you lost money. Whereas if you're a beginner, you got nothing, you got no track record, you got nothing to scare you away uh, just because some company is similar to another company that was in the past. That doesn't mean you're scared of it. You have nothing to fear because you don't have skeletons in the closet, guys. So that's the number one way that you as a new person have an advantage actually over experienced investors, guys. Number two way, you don't have any positive skeletons in the closet. What does that mean? Well, it's pretty much the exact opposite. You know, when I said skeletons in the closet, that means like bad ones, you know, uh, that are haunting you. Also, there's something called positive skeletons in the closet where if you actually had, let's say, a great investment and you did really good on investment, if, some, if another stock comes around sometime and it reminds you a little bit of that stock, you might be more inclined to invest in it just because it's somewhat similar to that stock. So maybe you were invested in Apple, right? Apple, a hardware company. So in, I'm talking about maybe you were invested in them in the in the mid 2000s, you know, when they had the iPod coming out and then they had the iPhone coming out and whatnot. And so you saw that growth and you invest and you made a lot of money on Apple stock, right? Well, the next hardware company that comes out, you might be more inclined to invest in them thinking, oh, that's the next Apple. I can make money on that because you got that positive skeleton in the closet reaffirming that, yeah, hey, yeah, go into this one. Maybe you invested in Facebook. You know, I'm not talking about uh, right at the IPO, but there, were, you know, when Facebook was like twenty dollars a share, maybe you were buying it at that time. I was, and unfortunately, I sold at twenty three dollars a share. That was really stupid. But maybe you were buying at that twenty dollars a share, and maybe you held it until it was over hundred dollars a share, and you made a ridiculous amount of money in a three year span. So maybe now all of a sudden you're like, oh, Snapchat, they're going to do that same thing. You know, that stock's going to drop and then I need to buy it. And then Snapchat's going to go up five, 500% like Facebook did or whatnot. And maybe that's not even going to happen. So maybe you're just seeing that positive skeleton and saying, oh, because that stock's that way, because it's similar to this one, I'm going to make a ton of money on it like that. Whereas if you're a beginner, you don't have any type of track record where you had great gains on stocks. So you don't have to um, think, oh man, that stock's similar to this one that I made money on in the past. Maybe I can make money again, guys. So 
That's number two way you have an advantage over more of an experienced investor if you're a newbie. Number three, uh, you're open to learning a lot more and you're not set in your ways yet. You're not set in your ways. You're open to learning everything about investing. The older you get, the more set in your ways you get. It's just how human nature works, guys. If you're gonna, okay, let's let's say we're talking politics for a second. Who do you think is gonna be more open to thinking about some different ways of, of thinking about politics? A 14 year old or a 44 year old? I'm gonna guarantee you that 14 year old has a lot more open mind on subjects. It will give you a lot of different various points if you say, what do you like this better or that better? Versus a 44 year old who's probably set in their ways. They're either probably a, a Republican or a Democrat and they really only see what things one way because they're probably set in their ways There might be a few here and there that are still open and thinking those kinds of things But most people at that age are set in their ways. Let's think about it another way Say you go to a local McDonald's Let's say you're the supervisor of you know McDonald's chains of 20 stores or whatever Who do you think you're gonna have an easier way of teaching a, a manager a new way of doing things. A manager that's been there for 20 years or a manager that's been there for two months? I'm going to guarantee you the manager that's been there for two months is going to be much more willing to learn about this new way of operating the McDonald's than the guy that's been there for 20 years doing it the same damn way for 20 years. He's probably not going to want to change the way uh, that he's been doing it. He's probably going to be like, this is the way we've been doing it for 20 years. I don't want to change this new way. And he's probably going to give you more flack and, and negative feedback and whatnot. Whereas that guy who's been there for two months, he's like, okay, I've been doing it this way for the first couple months of my job. But you know what? I can change it. We can do it this way. So same thing with investing. When you are when you're a new a new investor, you're just much more open to all the different ways of investing. You know whether it be short term, whether it be day trading, whether it be long term investing, whether it be super long term investing like Warren Buffett style, whether it be modern long term investing like I do, which is a one to three year outlook. So you're going to be a lot more open to learning about all these different ways and different ways of thinking about companies, all those kinds of things, guys. So. It's a, it's a huge advantage to you as a beginner versus someone that's already set in their ways and they're not going to change. I mean, you think Warren Buffett's going to change the way he, he invests in companies? No. The guy's, you know, 80-something years old. He made a huge success doing it the way he did it, and he's going to do it that way until he retires or dies, guys. That's the way it is. You know, people just get set in their ways. Number four way you have an advantage as a beginner over experienced people is it's easier than ever to invest now. As a beginner in the stock market now, you have an easier path to investing than ever in history of mankind. Never has it been easier. Never, ever, ever has it been easier, guys. Reason being, it's so easy to learn information, guys. Uh, look at this channel. I, I tell you guys about all these investing tips that I use in my life and all these different ways you can invest and whatnot. YouTube didn't exist prior to 10 years ago. This channel only started in 2016. This, but now all of a sudden this channel's built out and there's a different way for you to learn. You can Google anything you want about the stock market to learn about it in an instant. In an instant, guys, you can Google it. It's like ridiculously easy. You know, back in the day, you might have had to rent a book from the library or something. Now you can buy that book on Amazon in a second on your, or buy it on your iPad and read it right then and there, guys. You want to know what a P.E. ratio is? You can Google it in a second and know exactly what a P.E. ratio is. You want to know um, what, what Coca-Cola's balance sheet is? Type in Coca-Cola Investor Relations into Google, click on their page, click on their annual report, and boom, right there, their balance sheet's going to be right in that annual report showing you exactly what their balance sheet looks like for Coca-Cola. It's never been this easy, guys. It's never. Back in the day, you would have had to, like, you know, try to write them a letter, Coca-Cola Investor Relations, and try to find the address somehow, write them a letter, can I have an annual report sent to my house, please, and then they would have to send it to you. It was a mess, guys. And then, never mind that, investing and trading, you do it right on your smartphone now. You can do it right on your iPad, your tablet, whatever, your computer. Back in the day, you would have to like call a broker. Hey, can you uh, please sell me uh, five shares of blah, blah, blah. That was like ridiculous, guys. That's why investing back in the day, it was really only for wealthier type people or retirees. Whereas now, it doesn't matter. You can be an 18 year old with 500 bucks in your pocket. You can be a 50 year old with $50 million in your pocket. It doesn't matter. Everybody's on a level playing field now because information is that easy. You can Google anything you want in a snap of a finger, guys. Information is so easy to get nowadays. So you have a huge advantage. It's easier than ever to pick investments, guys. Easier than it's ever been in history by far. And it's not even close. Number five way you have an advantage as a beginner over advanced investors or people that have been doing it a long time is 
A lot of times, beginner investors are focused more on looking at the business and focus more on looking at what's inside their gut instinct on a stock than versus financial metrics. Now, personally, I think you should focus on the business and you should focus on financial metrics. I think that's the best way you'll get the best result. But the bottom line is, when you focus on the business, sometimes that can yield you a lot better results, a lot bigger stock gains than focusing on financial side of things, guys. For instance, there's been so many stocks over the years that I've loved from my gut instinct and from just judging the business, but the financial metrics told me to stay away from that. For instance, Amazon. Holy smokes, I could have made a massive fortune investing in Amazon. I felt so confident in Amazon and it's proved to be right and their stock just gone up and up and up, but they traded a ridiculous P ratio that I just can't touch it. Tesla, another example, you know, a stock's up, you know, eight, nine times, uh, 800, 900% in the past five, six, seven years, guys. Uh, Netflix, another one I believe did a ton that's up just ridiculous amounts. Uh, Facebook, remember I told you about Facebook at $20? Then I sold that at 23 because I was looking at the financial metrics and I was like, ah, the financial metrics tell me no on this company. So therefore I got to get rid of Facebook. Facebook's up 500, 600% since I sold out, you know, four years ago, guys. So sometimes going with your gut instinct, going with just judging the business and not focusing so much on financial metrics. Sometimes it can honestly yield you a lot better results than looking at all those financial metrics, but I still recommend the financial metrics are key in looking at an investment on top of looking at the actual business and going off gut. So those are the five main ones. Now let's do a couple honorable mentions that almost made this list, guys. So number one honorable mention that almost made the list is uh, a lot of times beginners take less risks, which sometimes yields them better, a better chance of not having as big of a loss. So, for instance, me personally, some of the companies I'm invested in right now, back when I was a beginner in the stock market, my first couple of years, I never would have touched these companies because uh, they were too risky for me. They were too risky. They traded at too high of a PE or, or too risky for me, basically, overall. So, years ago, I wouldn't have touched these type of companies. So, therefore, on a position like a GoPro, where I'm down, I don't know, 20, 30% right now on my shares. I never would have even touched that in the first place. I never would have even touched that. So I would never be down that 20 or 30% right now. Now I'm hoping for obviously way bigger gains than something I would have done in the past. But regardless, sometimes beginners in the stock market, they stay away from the riskier stocks and they go into more of the of the, the Coca-Cola type companies, the, the Johnson & Johnson, the Walmarts, those type companies that are a little safer. And yeah, maybe they don't get as big gains, but at the same time, they don't set themselves up for big losses or to be down big on a position, guys. So that's an advantage beginners in the have. And the last honorable mention here, guys, is... Beginners in the stock market focus a lot more on industries that they understand very well, that they're that is in their circle of competence. They don't get too, and I'm speaking generally, a lot of beginners in the stock market don't get too unfocused. They like to focus around industries. Maybe it's tech they really understand, so they like to invest in tech companies, look into tech companies, or maybe it's uh, oil companies. They, they like to stay around oil companies. So beginners in the stock market, they're a lot more focused on that circle of competence, staying in there, where sometimes... Investors that have been in the market for 5, 10, 15 years, they think like they can figure out any industry. Oh, I can just research that and I'll figure out that industry. And maybe they still don't even really understand and they go and invest in it, guys. So that's another advantage the beginners in the stock market have over advanced investors. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this. If you're a beginner in the stock market or you're an advanced investor, because maybe there's some lessons to be learned from all these type of tips today, guys. If you enjoyed this, hit a thumbs up. If you just came across it and maybe you're new to the channel, you might want to subscribe. We talk personal finance in the channel. I'm a business owner. I give away a lot of my business tips. And we also talk the stock market the most of anything on this channel, including some beginner in the stock market type videos like we did today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Jeremy. Uh, this is the Financial Education Channel. Today we're talking about... Mm, I can't remember what we're talking about, man.